Well, by now, most young people have begun another school year in which they will be learning all the things they need to know about life. Well, maybe not all the things. According to one education reformer, there are lots of important aspects of life that kids don't learn in school, but should. And not all of them have to do with academics. Here is a sampling of some rules about life that kids won't learn in school, but perhaps they should. Rule number 14, enjoy this time of life while you can. Sure, parents are a pain, school's a bother, and life is depressing, but someday you'll realize how wonderful it was to be a kid. Rule number four, if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss. <laughs> and rule number one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Well, I'm sure at some point in our lives we've all cried, it's not fair. And while we may think of these words as a child's lament, Fairness, or lack of it, continues to be a critical issue for adults, too. In fact, studies show that it is human nature for us to bristle when we thought, think that we have gotten the short end of the stick. And I think this happens predominantly in the workplace. And if you've ever had a boss who was less capable than you were, or discovered that a person with less experience was making more money, or if you've ever been passed over for promotion in favor of someone who is less qualified, well, you know the feeling. It's just not fair. And that's the reaction of the laborers in the vineyard in Jesus' parable. The landowner promises the workers who go out early in the morning a day's pay. To those who go out later in the morning, the landover promises whatever is right. And there are also laborers who go out at noon and work half the day, and some who go out at three and work half the afternoon. And then there are the laborers who go out at 5 p.m., and they only work for an hour. Now, our sense of fairness would say that the ones who work the most hours would earn the most money. But in the parable at the end of the day, each of the laborers is given a full day's pay, even the ones who started working at five o'clock. Now the first ones hired protest when they receive the agreed upon wage, complaining not because they have been cheated, they haven't, they've earned what the landowner promised to give them, but they grumble because of the landowner's generosity towards the latecomers, especially those ones who worked only an hour. The latecomers have hardly broken a sweat, but they too receive a full day's wage. And the landowner doesn't improve matters when he says, can't I do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you envious that I'm generous? Why do you begrudge my generosity? Well, we can certainly understand why those first hired workers protest, because this parable challenges our sense of justice and turns upside down our notions of fairness and reward that we have learned from childhood that we are to work for what we get, and we are to get what we work for. But this is not a parable about fair wages or lesson on workplace relationships. This parable is about God's grace. And the landowner representing God pays the laborers not based on their efforts, but instead based on his generosity. In our Old Testament lesson this morning, Jonah 
is also angered by God's generosity. Following God's owners, Jonah goes to the sinful people of Nineveh, and he has told them that God wants them to repent of their sins. Jonah is actually looking forward to God giving the Ninevites what, what Jonah believes they deserve for their godlessness. But instead, God forgives them, and he gives them a fresh start. Well, Jonah is jealous that God has forgiven the Ninevites. It offends his sense of fairness. So he yells at God and he stomps off in a tizzy and he plants himself out in the middle of nowhere to pout. But even though Jonah is disappointed and jealous and angry at God, does God turn away from Jonah? No. God provides a bush to shelter Jonah from the sun. But then Jonah takes that sheltering bush for granted. And when God takes the bush away, Jonah starts complaining again. And finally God says to Jonah, look, you've only had the shelter of a bush for a day and a night. I've known the people of Nineveh since I created them. You didn't create the bush, but I created the people, and I choose to love them. This is our God, who lavishes upon us grace, the unmerited, utterly unconditional, completely free, no strings attached, cannot be earned gift of God's love and favor. Now, in so many other faith traditions, people have to do something to earn God's approval, whether it's using a prayer wheel or going on pilgrimages or giving alms to the poor or avoiding certain foods or performing a certain number of good deeds, or praying at a certain time in a certain place in a certain position, or going through a cycle of reincarnations. These traditions say, follow this way of life, and you stand a good chance of gaining favor with God and eventually achieving salvation. But this morning's scripture lessons show us that God's love is for everyone. We can't earn it, and we don't deserve it. We can spurn it, we can run from it, we can hold it at arm's length, we can even try to kill it, but God loves us no matter what. And that makes grace a concept that is radical. It's countercultural. Some would even say the concept of grace is offensive because grace throws out our measurements of fairness, our understanding of meritocracy, where we earn things, including God's favor, based on our achievements. Now, our world might be pretty clear on who's deserving and who isn't, who belongs and who doesn't, who's up and who's down, who's our equal and who isn't. But that's not the way it is in God's world. God loves all people, the good ones and the bad ones, and even the ones who don't love God back. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? And you know what? It isn't fair. God isn't fair because God is a God of grace. God loves the happy and the angry, the generous and the jealous, the do-gooders and the no-gooders. God loves those who love and God loves those who don't love. God loves those we love, and God loves those we have a hard time loving. God forgives and frees us from our past mistakes 
enabling us to start over and over and over again. There is no sinner. There is no outcast. There is no unworthy person, no one who falls beyond the reach of God's gracious love. There is nothing that we can do to make God love us more, and there is nothing that we will do that will make God love us less. In spite of our anger or our jealousy or our disappointment with the way that life may treat us, in spite of our blunderings and our frailties and flaws and faults, in spite of what we do or fail to do, or whether we deserve it, in spite of everything, God continues to bless us with infinite, unconditional, and boundless love. So the fact of the matter is, no, God is not fair. Rather, God is generous and gracious from the most enterprising to the least motivated, from the saint to the scoundrel, from the one who has worked long and hard in the vineyard of the Lord to the one who shows up just in time to help put away the tools, we are all offered the same grace-filled compassion and generosity. Is life fair? Nope. And... For that, we may grumble and complain and protest. Is God fair? Nope. But in response, let us simply say, thanks be to God. Amen.